What's going on YouTube and Uncommon Sense fam? It's your boy Uncommon Sense back at you again with another fragrance review. Today, I wanted to hop on and do my take on the top 10 for the summer of 2020. First off, we want to just hop in and do an honorable mention. French Connection Man. They usually appear as the brand FCUK. That's French Connection United Kingdom. And I want to just highlight this fragrance. It debuted in 2018. I wanted to highlight this fragrance because blue is one of my favorite colors. It smells blue. To be honest with you, this one has a Versace Eros type of vibe, but it's lighter. It's a little less sweet, and it's a little more in the Eau Fresh direction. Not Versace Eau Fresh, but a fresh type of fragrance. I got about four and a half to five hours of wear the last time I wore it. And again, it stayed pretty linear throughout. I've not done a review of the fragrance yet, but I will go ahead and provide that soon. Every single day. Coming up to the number 10 spot, Iceberg Twice. If you guys don't remember the fashion house Iceberg back in the day for the Urban line, they used to feature Pink Panther and other cartoon characters on their clothing. I enjoyed the clothing line and I also enjoy the fragrance. So decent atomizer, good amount of spread. This one opens up minty, but it has a sweetness and a freshness about it. I think this one is more or less billed as a spring fragrance. However, I feel like it's scent character and scent profile will work better for me for summer. It's pretty unique. I don't hear much talk about Iceberg twice, so I definitely want to bring that to you guys as an uncommon scent that's out there. And I believe you guys should definitely check this out. This should have a space in your collection if you've not advanced too far beyond most of the designer fragrances that are out there. I'm partial to the note of mint and sweetness, so those types of fragrances perform well on my skin. Coming up to the number nine spot, Boucheron Quatre. What's interesting about this fragrance is that type of presentation, how the cap is integrated. You turn it down in order to access the atomizer. Great atomizer. This fragrance is very fresh. It's kind of sweet and aquatic. It reminds me of a Capri Sun in the feel. It's a little sweet and I I actually enjoy the fragrance. It puts me in the mind of Invictus, but I like the way Boucheron made this one a little bit more balanced. Sweet, fresh, and woody. I feel like the fragrance is indeed just a little bit more grown man and not as juvenile as Invictus. So, fellas, if you haven't tried Boucheron Quatre, go ahead and give it a shot. In addition, Boucheron Quatre does have some decent longevity. I've worn it during the evening. It's a little bit better when it's not as warm outside. As we ramp up into those warmer days of summer, I'll probably have to get my days in of wear of this one before it becomes too hot. Coming in at the number eight spot, we got Banana Republic Neroli Woods. And this one is an Eau de Parfum. Now, for you guys that don't know, Banana Republic Neroli Woods draws very close comparison to Tom Ford's Neroli Portofino. Also, it draws close comparison to Chopard's Guatemalan Cardamom and Neroli. But Guatemalan Cardamom and Neroli being a bit more well-balanced and sweet in my nose. But Banana Republic Neroli Woods is a great alternative in terms of price when it comes to Tom Ford's Neroli Portofino. Decent atomizer. The scent profile is extremely similar. And I feel like with having this fragrance around and it being an Eau de Parfum, I will be able to wear this one a little bit more. Even though it does have the Neroli note, that which is dominant, it smells very green and balmy. And I really feel like this will be a banger on summer days that are very warm and sunny. I really can't get enough of this fragrance. And now that I have this one, I probably won't be purchasing another bottle of Tom Ford's Neroli Portofino. Coming up to the number seven spot, Carl Lagerfeld Bois de Vetiver. Nice compressed atomizer. You guys can see that and hear how that juice is coming out of the bottle. I really enjoy this fragrance. 
I really think that I'll be wearing this one a lot. It does have that vetiver, but it's not as in your face as some of the other vetivers. In my opinion, it actually smells a little bit closer to Narciso Rodriguez's Blue Noir for him. The difference with this one being it's a little lighter. It's not as heavy on the musk and it's probably a little bit more concentrated in the realm of vetiver, at least on my skin. I feel like this is a very classy scent. It does kind of sit a little closer to the skin. It's not a projection monster, but it does perform pretty well on me. It lasts roughly about six and a half hours. It was my scent of the day a couple of days ago, and I really enjoyed how this fragrance was performing on my skin in warmer temperatures. I also want to give a shout out to a fallen legend, Carl Lagerfeld, who was head of Chanel a good time ago before going to found his own brand. Carl Lagerfeld was an iconic designer, and I was somewhat sad that he is no longer with us. This one's a newer fragrance. Came out uh, more recently, I wanna say in 2017. If you guys have not tried this one, I believe this could earn a spot in your collection depending on where you are in your fragrance journey. Coming up to the number six spot, we got Versace Man Off Fresh. Versace Man Off Fresh is not a monster in projection, but it does last very well on my skin. Very nice atomizer. That opening does leave a little bit to be desired. Some people have compared it to bug spray, but I cannot deny how fresh this one is. Versace Man Off Fresh is one of the freshy kings, and I really feel like for summertime, this is the epitome of what it feels like to be poolside. Fresh, clean, sexy. I will be rotating this one. This is probably one of my only fragrances that I have with starfruit in it, or those who know it, Carambola. For those of you who have not tasted Starfruit, which is a note that is in Versace Man All Fresh, it actually tastes exactly like it smells. I had a chance to try Starfruit for the first time at Fogart de Child's a couple of years ago. And the fragrance of that fruit is captured very well in the juice of Versace Man All Fresh. Coming in at the number five spot, we got Michael Kors with Strong Blue. There's not a lot of talk about this fragrance, but I actually enjoy this fragrance. It's musky, it's fresh, it's sexy as well. No doubt, this one's going to be in my summer lineup. I have positive memory associations with this fragrance. Every time I smell it, it kind of makes me happy. If you don't have this fragrance, I've not smelled many that actually smell like Michael Kors with Strong Blue. Coming into the number four spot, we got Al Hermain Laventure. Al Hermain Laventure is a Creed Aventus clone. This one is an Eau de Parfum. Very good atomizer and scent distribution. It opens very close to Aventus. I usually don't give these types of fragrances much light on my channel because I feel like they're extremely popular. Everybody talks about them when it comes to Club de Nuit, Intense Men, and the host of other Creed Aventus clones. I had a decan of Creed Aventus a while ago. While I like the way it smells, I will not lie to you, I am not willing at this point to be paying three to four hundred dollars for a Creed Aventus. So the Creed Aventus clones, I am definitely more willing to give a shot. With that being said, I like the opening on this one a lot. It really smells amazing. Kind of turns sweet into smoky. Reminds me of a Luau as well. So I'll be giving El Haramain's Laventure a little bit more play. Coming up to the number three spot, we got Moschino Toy 2. Fellas, trust me, I already know what you're going to say. But that's a woman's fragrance. It really doesn't matter. This fragrance smells amazing, regardless of who it's intended for. It smells like kosher wine and beautiful champagne. It is a banger. Also, this one is an Eau de Parfum, so it does have some lasting power and it lasts all day on my skin. It smells amazing. I doubt anybody's gonna be upset when they smell this on your skin, whether it's your lady or anybody else. This fragrance is fresh, sweet, sexy, but it is complex enough to be able to enjoy for summer. It's a fragrance that is going to push you for a reaction. People are gonna like it or they're gonna hate it. Actually, that's why I chose this fragrance to make my list because it is, to me, an uncommon scent. I don't believe I've smelled anything like this fragrance. I took a gamble and it actually paid off. And again, that bottle's pretty amazing. So, Moschino is becoming quickly one of my favorite houses because they have fragrances that incite a reaction. And that's what I like. I like to experience things. This one does have a few phases that it goes through as well on my skin. So it kind of goes through the kosher wine phase. Then it goes through the sparkling cider phase. Then it dries down into a fruity, clean, fresh 
fragrance. If you guys have not given it a chance, go ahead and check out Moschino Toy 2. Coming up to the number two spot, we got Franck Olivier Eau de Passion Intense Men. Nice atomizer. Eau de Passion Intense Men has been receiving a lot of comparison to Chanel Platinum Egoist. I enjoy the way that this fragrance performs on my skin. I ended up spraying it on my skin before I went to bed as my nighttime fragrance. It performed very well. I could still smell it on my skin when I woke up. So throughout the night, it definitely lasted and I get about seven and a half, eight hours of performance out of this fragrance. So I definitely feel like it'll perform very well in the summer. It has a very sharp opening, but I enjoy the way that this performs on my skin. It smells really good. It's a, a clean, classy, freshness about this fragrance that I love. In addition, that bottle's pretty dope. We've arrived, gentlemen. I appreciate you guys for sticking around to the end to uncover my top scent for summer 2020. Coming in at number one, Jimmy Choo Man Ice. I enjoyed this fragrance a whole lot, and a lot of folks give it some hate because they feel like it doesn't perform well. I will say this, the fragrance itself is not the best performing, however, I'll carry a decan of this one because I love the way this smells. If you guys have ever had an Italian ice, an Italian ice tastes and feels like how this smells off my skin. The atomizer on this one, one of the best in the game. Kind of reminds me of the Dior atomizers, which again, are some of my favorites. I love how this one mists and provides that cooling effect. Off top, it has that sharp tart lemon, and there's some musk and sweetness in there. Some of the fellas in Fried Crime have also suggested placing this one in the refrigerator before you spray it on your skin for summer. It provides a cool, relaxing, fresh treat for your skin after you freshly take a shower before you get out in the summer heat. I necessarily tried that for myself, but I will say upon first blast of this hitting some skin, it provides that clean, cool, refreshing effect. And I would also suggest that you guys take a decant of it with you to refresh as you see fit. Because this one lasts roughly about four and a half, five hours on my skin. And I'm almost certain in the summertime heat that will probably cause it to evaporate a little bit quicker. I appreciate you guys for checking out my top 10 men's designer list for summer 2020. It's been your boy Uncommon Sense, and I'm out.